Welcome back to our study of the fundamentals of operating systems. Based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silbershots, Gagne, and Galvin. In the last lesson, we started examining the various methods of allocating memory to processes. We started with contiguous memory allocation. In this lesson, we're going to examine a problem called the General Dynamic Storage Allocation Problem. So let's begin. How do we determine which of the available blocks an incoming process will be assigned? This is the General Dynamic Storage Allocation Problem, which concerns how to satisfy a request of some size from a list of available blocks. There are many solutions to this problem, but the first fit, best fit, and worst fit strategies are the ones most commonly used to select a free block from a set of available blocks. Now the first fit strategy is to allocate the first block that is big enough. Searching can start either at the beginning of the set of blocks or at the location where the previous first fit search ended. We can stop searching as soon as we find a free block that is big enough. The best fit strategy is to allocate the smallest block that is big enough. In this case, we must search the entire list, unless the list is ordered by size. This strategy produces the smallest leftover block. And thirdly, the worst fit strategy allocates the largest block available. Again, we have to search the entire list unless it's sorted by size. This strategy produces the largest leftover block, which may be more useful than the smaller leftover block from the best fit approach. Situations have shown that both first fit and best fit are better than worse fit in terms of decrease in time and storage utilization. Neither first fit nor best fit is clearly better than the other in terms of storage utilization, but first fit is generally faster. Obviously being able to place a process in the first block it will fit is much quicker than having to look at all the available blocks. Do a calculation to compare the size of the incoming process to the size of each block and then determine where to put the process. Both first fit and best fit strategies for memory allocation suffer from what is referred to as external fragmentation. As processes are loaded and removed from memory, the free memory space is broken into little pieces. External fragmentation exists when there is enough total space to satisfy a request, but the available spaces are not contiguous. Storage is fragmented into many small blocks. This fragmentation problem can be severe. In the worst case, we could have a block of free memory available between two processes. Take a look at the image at the bottom of this slide. There are two available blocks on either side of the process 9. What if process 10 comes along and is too large to fit in either of those two available blocks? even though the combined capacity of the two blocks is enough to hold process 10. Well, process 10 is out of luck. Remember, this approach to memory allocation still requires that the parts of the process that are loaded must be loaded in one contiguous block. Process 9 is in the way. If all of these small pieces of memory were in one free block instead, we would be able to run several more processes. Whether we're using first fit or best fit strategy can affect the amount of fragmentation. First fit is better for some systems, whereas best fit is better for others. Consider that image again at the bottom of the slide. Processes 5 and 8 have both finished, leaving two slightly different size blocks. Let's assume that process 10 will fit either available block. 
Whether we're using first fit, best fit, or worst fit, the algorithm being used selects the larger block below process 9 to use for process 10. Another factor is which end of a free block is allocated, top or bottom? In our example, where is the leftover piece going to be, above process 10 or below process 10? It's highly unlikely that process 10 will fit that hole exactly, so we will still have some degree of external fragmentation. The question is, would it be better to place process 10 at the bottom of the hole next to process 2 or at the top of the hole next to process 9? If we choose the bottom, then if process 2 finishes next, we will then have three small blocks none of which will be large enough for a new process. On the other hand, if we place process 10 at the top of the block, then if either process 9 or process 2 finishes next, we will have two somewhat larger blocks. Interesting, right? No matter which algorithm is used, though, external fragmentation is going to be a problem. Depending upon the total amount of memory storage and the average process size, external fragmentation may be a minor or a major problem. Memory fragmentation can be internal as well as external. Consider a multiple partition allocation scheme with a block of 18,464 bytes. Suppose the next process requests 18,462 bytes. If we allocate exactly the requested block, we are left with a block of 2 bytes. Overhead to keep track of this block will be larger than the block itself. The general approach to avoiding this problem is to break the physical memory into fixed size blocks and allocate memory in units based upon block size. With this approach, the memory allocated to a process may be slightly larger than the requested memory. The difference between these two numbers is internal fragmentation, unused memory that is internal to a partition. We will still have some degree of fragmentation, but it should be generally smaller. Now bear in mind now what I'm saying is that one approach is to have variably sized blocks, in which case when a process is assigned to a block, it's assigned exactly the amount of space for that block. Whereas in a fixed size block, when a job is assigned a block, it gets the entire fixed size block, which leaves a little bit of fragmentation within a block, which can't be used by anybody else. Let's take a break right here and update our study guides and study our notes. And when we come back, we will start talking about a potential solution to some of this fragmentation problem.